about to pee and there was three people here. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, well, I know basic we were, biology. I know where more people come from. <laughs> we were busy while you were gone. We're buddy. clearly very busy. We were fruitful. I love you guys so much. I want to marry you. <laughs> I married a convention. I married a convention. Alcohol may have been a factor. I'm just saying. Just super saying. How cool is this? Look at how awesome my teeth are. There is so much talent out there, you guys blow my mind. this wrong. Hang on. <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> wow. I swear there was two people when I left. <laughs> three. Said three. Yeah, there was two, then there was six, and then anyway. <laughs> Adam and Eve, two people. How did that happen? There was some inbreeding after that. I guess. <laughs> well, think about it. That's how we got you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I am the result of 10,000 generations of inbreeding. <laughs> but you ought to hear me play the banjo. <laughs> Hell yeah. Speaking of giant balloon animals, like, wah, I remember you guys. This guy does all of this. It's, you should see everything that this man can do with a balloon. It is so far beyond, you know, your usual balloon animal stuff. He is an artist who works in balloon, latex, and air, and creates magic. <laughs> it was awesome until the freak dust storm came up. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so cool. He's got a cutie mark. Oh yeah! Traveling sounds, ponies non Thank you so much. It is wonderful seeing you again. You, sir, are an artist of high esteem. High regard, high... And, and as you said, I finally I did what you told me to, and I'm now the guest at, I, I think, um, about six or seven conventions this year. I told you! Thank you so much. Look at this stuff! <laughs> but the person I need to thank is this gentleman for giving me the, the, up the courage to get to do it. This gentleman is wonderful. That's very kind, and, thank you. But I am wondering, um, now, I'm, I'm not sure if I will be uh, interrupting uh, too much, but um, would you be able to uh, give a shout out to a particular convention that I am cosplaying this for, that I'm a sponsor, and you know, that these guys are sponsoring me with? I can do that. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. yes, after, after we are done, would you be able to do that? We will. Thank this you bump. so much. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Hey, off, off. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a really bad idea. A giant balloon creature doing a fist bump with Wolverine. <laughs> this is not going to end well. But it'll be fun. So good. Oh my god. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Scott. Hello, hi, Dr. Nick. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> I have no idea where to start now. I'm glabberflasted. <laughs> Can't go, me! <laughs> Hi, my name 
my name is Scott, and I'm a. You're not oh. a <laughs> <laughs> oh, screw that! I thought you were married. I am married today. I have terrific legs. <laughs> I did like four conventions with Dante, going like, this dude's really nice hanging out. And then suddenly I just went, the shoe dropped, and I went, oh my god, you were freaking Rufio! Because <laughs> I'm smart. So then I went all fanboy. <laughs> um, yeah, hi, welcome. I'm Scott and I'm a voice actor, you know? So uh, what I do, you know, I do it for a living what I used to get kicked out of school for. Because <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this a long time. 25 years now before the microphone, man and boy. Back in those days, we didn't have no fancy microphones. You held up the tape and you yelled at it. That's right, tape! The industry, she has changed. We just covered that in the last panel. Um, so yeah, I've done a whole pile of stuff back from the He-Mans and G.I. Joes and Transformers and all through the animes and the Dragon Ball Z's and the Gundam Wings and the Inuyasha's. And uh, now My Little Ponies. <laughs> Hell yeah. Soon, soon. Soon, my friend. Um, so yeah, hi and welcome. I'm totally at a loss as to what to do, as I often am. Welcome to my little ADD world. <laughs> attention, ADOS, attention deficit. Ooh, shiny. Shiny booby squirrels, what? Shiny squirrel boobies. Don't knock them till you've seen them, I'm just saying. So, uh, if you guys have questions and stuff, that would, otherwise I'm just gonna stand here and stare at you. <laughs> wow, you guys are good. Do you have, oh, look like a bassoon from back here. I can see you very well. Thank you, I can see you very well too. You seem so real. All right, it's time to close down the steel gates and pump in the interesting gas. <laughs> Soon you will begin to feel relaxed as you listen to the sound of my voice. <laughs> All of your childhood worries and problems will disappear, along with most of your personality. <laughs> what is that that you're holding? Oh, they're not giant chain nunchucks. Okay. Do not pick a fight with this man anyway. <laughs> I swear to God, it looked like a giant bassoon. But I'm on drugs, so it's okay. I can see music. I can hear the color orange. And it's awesome. And that's just from Advil. Your shirt is staring at me. Yeah. Mine? Yeah. Sorry. It's okay, it's weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, questions and hopefully I can answer them and, and we'll start with the fabulous Flim Flam Brothers. Not really a question so much as we have an offering. <laughs> an offering. Oh, that's not Flim Flam. Oh. The gift of Twinkies. <laughs> X-Men, uh, now I'm a Twinkie. <laughs> I have been a pasta shape. I have been a Pez dispenser. I am now a Cards Against Humanity card. But that doesn't hold a candle to the fact that I am now a Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know I had you sign about 50,000 things earlier, but yes. I forgot one thing in the hotel room. Yes, as soon as we're done here. Yes, All right, thank you so much. You know, I've never eaten a Twinkie in my life until last year. There's a Twinkie in Dallas, Texas that I signed every year for five years running. Same Twinkie. True story. In the dystopian post-apocalyptic future, the world will be overrun by the crossbreeding of cockroaches and Twinkies. There will be these giant sentient Twinkies ruling the earth, scuttling up into the ductwork like musicians. 
thank you. Someday I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, by the time this day is done, dear help me God, I will eat one of these Twinkies. Because I have a plan. Yes, kind sir. Ah, my plan has gone into fruition. <laughs> You can walk, you lazy motherfucker. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That is, I see where this is going, don't you? <laughs> so what would happen? It's Christmas in July. What happens in a small suburban neighborhood when Oreos, Twinkies, and aerosol spray cheese all meet up? It's the sharp cheddar too. Is this something you want me to try? Oh God, something's about to, it's gonna get weirder now, isn't it? Thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Do not feed the Canadian sugar. A chocolate Twinkie in spray cheese with bacon. Are they actual monkeys? <laughs> like they're made from monkey? Just try one. They're made from monkey. Tell me they're made from monkey. They're made from monkey. Oh my god, I love monkey brains. <laughs> Seriously, my favorite scene in Indiana Jones. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. I can actually give you the recipe later. We'll talk. All right, let's get this out of the way. Blue Twinkie! This is going big or go home!
think it tastes? <laughs> Jesus, it tastes like ass. <laughs> How are you go? How will you go? <laughs> As often is the case in these scenarios, it was surprisingly not bad. In a really disgusting and grotesque kind of way. All right, is that out of the way? Is everybody's evil hunger satisfied? It's like being a gladiator. You know that orange food is the fifth food group, right? And I'm not talking about no bullshit carrots and stuff. I'm talking real orange food. Cheese that's spelled with a Z in any way, shape, or form. And Fenta. Oh God, I don't have to do that for another year. I'm so happy. Whoever comes in next is gonna go, why does this microphone... It smells like blue Twinkies, spray cheese, Oreos, chocolate. Beningy bites <laughs> with just a slight overtone of Fanta <laughs> and Oreo. Transformers more than meets the eye. <laughs> okay, that part's done. Ah, really good. You should all come up and try it after. <laughs> Here's a really good technique and a trip and a tip. For those who are trying to get attention from a large crowd where hands are up, putting sparkly, bright, shiny, flashy things on your fingers is always a good idea. <laughs> yes, sir. Shiny. Uh, yes, I was curious, exactly how long ago did that tradition start, and what started it? Like, where did that challenge? The tradition of the Twinkie, or of the uh, spray cheese, rather, started in a town of lunatics. <laughs> A place that I like to think of as Bedlam. A place that the rest of the world geographically refers to as Tampa Bay, Florida. And it started with you guys. And somebody set up in a convention and somebody had brought me spray cheese for some weird reason because I think I had stated that you can't get it in Canada. So I happened to have a can of spray cheese. And somebody stood up and went, Mr. McNeil. And I went, yes, if you call me Mr. McNeil again, I shall have you escorted out of the building. <laughs> Be that as it may, they said, all right, Scott, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> and I said, what wouldn't I do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> so they brought me this molten, w melted, drippy Klondike bar. And like an idiot, I went. <laughs> and every single video camera in the room came up. <laughs> And I went, oh God, there's no way to not do this now. <laughs> so it became a thing. And so now it's like, we gotta up the ante every year. I sit there on the flight down going, okay, what's the most disgusting thing I could put spray cheese on? <laughs> I came up with a great one the other day, but I can't remember what it was because honestly, it actually makes everything taste a little better. <laughs> so uh, that is the sordid tale of spray cheese. Spray cheese and smoked salmon, yeah, that would be up there. Spray cheese on a pickle? Oh, a deep fried pickle, who said deep fried pickle? Oh. You know what, I never had those until I was down in Texas and I went, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever, it's like, dear God, those are good, and deep fried Mars bars. Which is weird, you would think that would be a very American thing. Deep fried Mars bars come out of Scotland. Deep fried Twinkies. Yep. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that without the Twinkie bursting into flame? Because the Twinkies are made from styrofoam and petroleum product. <laughs> or at least that's what my educated palate tells me. <laughs> they have fried ice cream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, baked Alaska. You cover ice cream in meringue, poof, cook in the oven. Meringue is a very good insulator. Okay, so no more food. Yes. Um, this is just a question. Um, do you remember the word omnificus? Omnificus? Should I? It's a fun word to say. Yes, you should, because you made it. Oh good, it's one of my words. No wonder I liked it. <laughs> it is omnificus. Did I come up with a definition? Um, well, really... The state of being... 
I, well, really, you said it's a mixture. I don't remember what you said it was a mixture of, but it was like omnipotent and magnificent. Terrific and magnificent. Okay, that'll work. Yeah. Omnificent. Omnificus. Say it all with me. Omnificus. It's now your new word. You were doing this. I don't remember what speech you were doing, but you were doing this whole speech, and you were like, "Omnis." I don't know. Omnificus occasion. All right. Damn, that was pretty good. I did that. That was me. It might have been one of the other Scott McNeils. No. Because there's seven of us working the circuit right now. It's true. The original Scott McNeil was retired. It's looking like a king in Patagonia. Yes! Much like the Dread Pirate Roberts. <sighs> Omnificus. Okay, you have a large piece of cardboard with an arrow on it pointing at your own head. Another good tactic. <laughs> Same deal. We have a question. If we saw you our soul, would you sign this government Yeah, I could do that without the soul. I've been living without a soul myself for a long time. I will do that as soon as we're done the panel thing. Well, um, otherwise it'll turn into signing and it'll be madness. Speaking of large cardboard boxes. <laughs> why are you all walking around with cardboard boxes? Why aren't you? Because we buy stuff. Yes, sir. Right now? I can do it from here. Because there's a moat filled with spikes and stuff. <laughs> Seriously, you can't see it. It's a thing called a haha. -ha. You can't see it from there, but I can. And it's got like, piranhas and crocogators. <laughs> and one nasty looking lemur sitting on a baby's head. <laughs> and a platypus. And a platypus. <laughs> oh, bloody long platypi. Well, an interesting animal. They're amazingly small. You think platypus would be like the size of a beaver, but they're not. They're about this big and tasty. <laughs> I will uh, at a chance when we're when we're not doing this. I have a thought about Koga. So, BS and P, which is broadcast standards and practices, which looks after things like language and blah blah blah. And I think. Now, you factor in the fact that. The entire universe that Inuyasha is based in, they are all canids of some sort. They are all members of the dog family. Foxes, wolves, dogs, blah, 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 blah. So if you ascribe to the tenets and the practices of both the British Kennel Club and the American Kennel Club, there are certain terminologies that are accurately used. So there is no reason flaunting in the face of BSNP that I could not on that show at some point sit down and go, Kagome? You will be my bitch. <laughs> we can get rid of all mutt face over there. That's the proper term. Dog and bitch. There's no such thing as a female dog. Anyway, I digress. Ooh, Why shiny things me? what? Dragons. No, Godzilla. Can you sing the Mario Pony theme song as Piccolo? I don't even know the My Little Pony theme song. <laughs> Other than just, you know, My Little Pony. <laughs> Special Pimp. Dodge! What kind of car do you drive? Dodge. What's your favorite candy? Nerds. <laughs> I did that for like two years before I knew what the hell I was, because people were like, say that. I'm like, then I watched a bridge and went, oh, now I understand. <laughs> Those guys are funny. <laughs> yes, lovely young lady in the purple hair sitting next to Scott who's being pointed at by Scott and now being addressed by Scott, yes. <laughs> another? <laughs> another? You like now or? <laughs> I haven't rested up from the last one. <laughs> another what? What do you got? <laughs> do, 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 do. Sorry. I told you lately that I love you. <laughs> you ever just gone up to a guy and just gone like... <laughs> um, <sighs> it would have an effect. It would create an impression. Or an extrusion. Yes? I got two things. One, please sing a Let It Go. No! <laughs> God, I hate that song. It's one of the nine million songs that's stuck in my... What? Thank you. Thank you 
so much. Poor that's I just got started. Okay, you know what? We're locking the doors. <laughs> Except for them. They're like, and the second thing is, how do you feel about being God? As in legally representing my company of being God? <laughs> well, you're the Lord of all of us. <laughs> We're not worthy. <laughs> Stop it! I am no God. <laughs> Except in the annals of my company where I registered myself as the grand omnipotent dictator for life and the government screwed it up and they just did the acronym but they couldn't figure out enough space for the for life so I'm just listed as the G-O-D of my company. Um, I'm already getting the signal, which is weird, but which means we may have to pick up the pace a little bit. We're not quite at, quite at lightning round yet, but yes? Um, if Kelvin could say anything you wanted to to Kagome and Ian, what would you be? What were you thinking? I, I have words for, for Koga. This may be a totally different thing, but I want to sit him down, sit his young wolf ass down and go, look, Kagome. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> She's not interested in you. However, the Ayame, <laughs> the very young, very attractive, and let's not put too fine a point on it, very available and willing Ayame, <laughs> is said, jeez, open your eyes, son. Yes. You guys are like totally together, weren't you? Your hands were, it was like synchronized swimming. <laughs> Weirdest Olympic sport ever, solo synchronized swimming. Think about it, weird. Yes? So last year, I gave you and the other guests a plate of fluffernutters, and I've been wondering whether you made any since then. Uh, whether I made any since? I've never made any well, since. You made any after oh, since then? Yeah, since I have not yet had an opportunity to sit down and make a tray, a plate of fl 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 Fluttered. It sounds kind of dirty when you say it, doesn't it? <laughs> like just a little bit, in like a really wholesome kind of way. Fluffer nutters. <laughs> There's always a little giggle at the end. I have not yet, but I will because I like to cook, especially nuffer fluffles. <laughs> David. Yes, Scott. What is the meaning of life? There is no meaning to life, David. It's time that somebody broke it to you. <laughs> forty-two. Forty-two. Everybody knows it's forty-two. Forty-two. Forty-two is the meaning of life for me and you. Forty-two. Forty-two. Why am I carrying this chair around? I like the chair. Everybody. Uh, yes, with your hand encased in black, with your fingers escaping through the fabric like some sort of demonic hand ripping through the soul of the universe. Yes. Do you ever find your luggage? Yes. It showed up. The reason I was able to stand out on stage at opening ceremonies not naked was they found it, it flew in for two, and somebody went out to the airport, and then back with my luggage, and it was like, okay, and we're announcing the guests now, and it's like, your luggage is here. So I'm going, I have my pants off, and I'm going, don't call my name, don't call my name, don't call my name, please. Otherwise, it'll be like, hi, I'm Scott McDeal, and uh, these are my genitals. I'd like to show you some puppetry tricks. I call this one the cheeseburger. So yes, my luggage managed to show up, which is why I actually almost smell like a human being now. But thank you for asking. Because I wish that United Airlines was as courteous as you are. Okay, there are things waving back and forth, which is like... Okay, yes. Mm-hmm. I love it, you know, you, there's six hands and you go, and so they all do this, and then they go, who me? I'm going, yeah, the one doing this, and then it spreads, and then the entire world. I hate them. <laughs> no, you know what's funny? Like, when we're doing anime, we're not actually in the studio at the same time working together. Really? Oh yeah, we're going in one at a time and dubbing. Prelay, the entire cast is... Uh, but I've worked with those guys for years. Richard is one of the most side-splittingly funny people I've ever known. He's weird as hell. But I mean, he's one of the most... He won't, I can't breathe around him sometimes. It's one of the few times where you're sort of begging somebody to stop. We did a panel once, and I just, I didn't say a thing. He went on this whole thing about the gay unborn sharks, and uh, it's just like, he's crazy. <laughs> but um, the, the, thing, the thing that I really liked about working on Inuyasha was one of the very few projects I've ever done where I didn't have to audition. Because the, normally they don't, you know, it's like, who cares who anybody is, right? But Toshi with Viz, 
he had done a bunch of cons with me. And he, you know, this was right when Gundam was really huge and Wolverine, you know, X Men was. So he, Toshi just goes, "Look, I've got a character in in Inuyasha that." He goes, "Frankly, I've seen everybody go crazy over Duo and everybody go crazy over Wolverine." He goes, "This guy's pretty much halfway in between. He's yours." <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've worked with all those guys for years, you know, prelay and otherwise. A lot of times when I'm doing anime, I mean, I will say, okay, who's playing the other character in this scene? Because it'll give me an idea of how they're going to play it. You know, it, it really helps me out because I go, okay, if it's Richard doing it, I know a lot of, you know, I, I get a pretty clear idea of what he's going to probably do with this character. So it helps me. And sometimes they will play us the stuff that's done if they recorded it first. Sometimes we record it first. It's all crazy. Yes! Because you have a thing in your hand. Boobies, shiny squirrel, what? Do you think you can say Super I don't think I could sing Super... I still can't say it! <laughs> super Speedy... Step into them. Step into the modern world. And put the Super Speedy Side of Squeezy 6000 to the tail. That was just weird. Okay, giant balloon arm. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, I've actually uh, recently become uh, friends with, uh, with John Patrick Lowry and Ellen McClay, the uh, uh, voice of uh, the Sniper and I collaborated with them on the forward. What I'm wondering is, since you have been transformed into the epic transformer, have you ever worked with Ellen McClay? I have not worked with Ellen McClay. Or at least not directly. You know, a lot of times we may end up working on the same projects together, but they're working out of LA or wherever they're working out of, I'm working out of Canada. So a lot of times paths cross, but I have not actually been in the studio with them at the same part of the time-space continuum now. Oh, chef. Oh, you know what? That's good. Flashing strobe light. Yes, quick. Um, can you please just like tell your Shatner story? Which? Uh, the, the one where, where you, you... All right. Yeah. Because I've, I've worked with Mr. Shatner a few times. Uh, the, one of the very first conventions I ever did was in Toronto, and it was a big one. And this was right when Gundam Wing was huge. I'll try to make this very brief. Um, so, you know, I, I'd never been to this con. I'm still, like, overwhelmed at how cool it is at con. And people, it, it, Gundam Wing, it's huge at the time. So uh, I was doing a convention in Toronto. One of the big epic guests was Mr. William Shatner himself, who was flying in on the Saturday to do his thing. And so they, they stuck my table up at the top of the escalator, which turned out to be kind of a mistake, because the swarm <laughs> ascended or descended. So then, <laughs> Mr. Shatner's helicopter is ascended onto the roof. He comes down and it's like, there's no way to get through. And he's sitting there and he's got his paper. Just hear this. Who the fuck is Scott McNeil? <laughs> Okay, we are going into lightning round mode because we're getting the five minutes. So who's got a question? Stick your hand up. Okay, all those hands stay up. No more hands go up. I will answer these questions and we're gonna do this fast. You're gonna ask a very quick question. I'm gonna ask a very quick answer. And then as soon as we're, and we will get through. So start here, go. And too low, go. When you first started your voice acting talent? Like when you first started your voice acting talent? the first time that I was a talent? <laughs> first time I ever walked on set and somebody went, are you talent? And I'm like, uh. My mom thinks so. Um, I discovered that this is what I wanted to be and do when I was 12 years old in Disneyland and I heard Paul Frees' voice in the Haunted Mansion. You know, the, welcome foolish mortal. And then I found out he was also the Pillsbury Doughboy and my head went ping. <laughs> I have been doing voices since I was two and then I started working. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I was dicking around. Here. No regrets, buddy, no regrets. I have a ton of regrets. Uh, a lot of it has to do with work and stuff I didn't get, but, or, you know, people I didn't be right by and blah, blah, blah. That's very deep. You can't answer that one quickly. I'm sorry to everyone I ever heard. Yes? Can I do a say hello to Troll real fast? Pardon me? Can you do a say hi to Troll, please? Can I do a say hi to Troll? Yes. A say hi. It's not a very German. It's like a six five. Oh, say hi. <laughs> to Troll. Wow, I'll make you this promise, though. I will be the god of death once more. But right now, <laughs> hey, Troll. What, what, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> You're creepy. What's with the hair? Yes! <laughs> Fan. <laughs> oh, never mind. So you said that you were allowed to just kind of do whatever you wanted to and be a super evil. How often do you get a chance to just kind of 
improv and go crazy. Yeah. Um, sometimes you really have to stick very strongly to the words of the writer. In anime, when we're dubbing, sometimes we just have to rewrite to make stuff fit. Creatively, on prelay shows like that, Oftentimes, sometimes, yes, no, League of Super Evil, thank you for mentioning that because I'm personally proud of that show. They let us go crazy. There was other show I reboot when I did reboot, uh, Gary, thank you. <laughs> Gary and I is hack and slash that so we would do one pass, pardon me, as scripted, and then they would just open up both mics and let Gary and I just go crazy. They'd be like, that was funny, do something else, and you'd do something else, and they almost always use the stuff that we, it's, if you're working with creative people, it's really easy to, to have fun and bounce and do that. So it depends entirely from show to show. Yes, sir. My favorite role, that's an impossible question to answer. The last one I did or the one that I'm looking forward to now. You know, being Hermie the Elf and Yukon Cornelius made me really, really happy. I'm independent. Realize as an adult, it's like, Hermie was gay as hell. <laughs> that's what the whole thing was about. Not if you don't mind my being a dentist. I know. Did I ever tell you about bumbles? Um, you know what, they're all so much fun. I mean, obviously getting the phone call, you're Wolverine is cool because it's cool before you start. <laughs> you just step into the cool. Um, all fun, like really crazy. Uh, 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 where were we? Yes, sir. Name all the Quinn Martin Pardon me? All, name all the Quinn Martin. A Quinn Martin production. You and I would be the only people in here that would get any of that, and frankly, I don't remember. The streets of San Francisco. Yeah. The mind of Scott McNeil, a Quinn Martin production. Uh, where did you all go? It was like a sea of garden eels and then they just dropped Pikachu. Oh, 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 excuse me. I have not yet collected them all. Have I who? I have not met her. I would love to. I honestly would. Just to say, hey, thanks for the work. <laughs> Giant helmet staring me in the face from space. Uh, in Pickle's voice, can you say, everybody do the flop? It's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> do the flop. All right, listen up, kid. I only got time to say this once, because I got two pieces of advice for you. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that it ain't easy being green. <laughs> Second of all, everybody do the flop! <laughs> I have no idea what that meant. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. What was your first paying voice job? My very first paying voice job was The New Adventures of He-Man. <laughs> back in, you did not. You weren't even embryos then. <laughs> uh, back in 1988. And I went from being an unemployed actor to, and that was back when we did 65 episodes of Prelay Series, and it was, and I just went, wow. It was my, it was a dream, because I, how I got, there wasn't, you know, when I decided, knew that this is what I wanted, I trained very seriously as an actor, I studied, you know, classic theater, and Shakespeare and Ibsen and Moliere and blah, 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 um, but that was mysterious stuff that was done by geniuses in Los Angeles. I live in Vancouver, Canada. I happened to be lucky enough to kind of almost stumble into it just as the industry was starting to roll up north of the border. And, uh, you know, that was where you go like, wow, the universe, God, everything just said, we're going to let this happen. And I'm so, to this day, thankful and grateful for it. Because, you know, right time, right place, right, for say the right thing to the right person in the right way. Million and one chances that it would never have happened. I got very lucky. And 12,000 episodes plus later, I'm still rocking it. The best I can. And that... We're lucky you just snuck there. Where's this mysterious hand? Come on, this is seriously anticlimactic. It's ruining the flow of the whole show. Yes. What is my favorite? I'm doing this because I can't hear people. <laughs> I to do or to? I don't watch TV. I honestly don't. I didn't own a TV for like 10 years. I occasionally play video games and I watch cooking shows when I can. So my favorite anime is the one that you love the most. <laughs> Although, admittedly, you know what, Dragon Ball Z, I worked on that show for 10 years. We just did more on Kai, so probably 12 years total. That one just by, by process of a little bit of attrition. And plus, you get to scream so hard that your voice bleeds and you, you, you pass out. Because you never know how long those screams are going to be. You just see it in the script, it's like, oh, big battle scream. You're like, beep, beep, beep. Then 
praise God. Oh my God, there's somebody. No! And then the world goes. Mm. <laughs> True story. You guys are amazing. I love each and every one of you. Thank you.